Building a screen scroller app requires game mechanics and features that work together to create a unique gaming experience. Each level needs hidden secrets that add to the entertainment. My name is Kyle. I'm an independent mobile app developer showing you some of the key steps in building an app. In today's video, I will show you how to design, start, and stop a level. Screen scroller apps have a wide variety of map features that contribute to the game's excitement. Enemies, platforms, and objectives will serve their own purpose in the game. In this part, I will add in moving and fake platforms. Here, Wukong can run into the newly created moving platform just to be pushed back to where he came from. And when he jumps on the platform, he can stand on it but doesn't move with it. To fix this, Wukong needs to be added into the reference frame of the moving platform, meaning his velocity is set to the velocity of the platform. Now, when Wukong lands on the platform, he takes its speed and moves along with it. Perfect. But how does it look once he starts walking? In this case, I would expect him to be moving really fast. Conversely, when the platform and Wukong are moving in the opposite directions, I would expect him to be moving really slow. Wukong walking on the moving platform is like a person walking on a people mover or escalator. Your new velocity is the sum of your original velocity and the reference frame you are in. When these velocities are moving in the same direction, they are added together, making it feel like you are traveling at high speeds, or at low speeds when moving in the opposite direction. This clip is from my last video where I coded a runtime event that moves the screen along with Wukong. The code appears to break down when Wukong moves without using the walking event. Similarly, in this clip, Wukong is not walking, he is being pushed. The screen does correctly follow him, however, the platform no longer oscillates back and forth. The platform's path is bounded between two fixed points on the screen, independent of the screen moving. As we saw in the last clip, the screen followed Wukong as he was being pushed along. The platform followed along, trying to reach its right bound, and oscillate back into the other direction. The code was changed to account for Wukong's distance traveled, and the boundaries of the platform were adjusted for the distance. Next, I want to create a static platform that stops Wukong as he runs. These platforms will be stacked on top of each other to raise the height of the floor. Or I could add in a fake platform that Wukong could pass right through. These sensor objects will change transparency upon collision and allow Wukong to pass right through them. Now that I have a variety of game components, I want to create a level for Wukong to play through. To do this, I will first want to introduce a standard unit of distance called block. All of my platform objects will be scaled down to this size, allowing me to create a grid system with a base unit of one block. Using this grid system, I can place an object on the screen by inputting an ordered pair, such as 3, 1, instead of the messy variables I was previously using. This will save me a lot of time in building a level. Now I have a scaled down map of what the first level will look like. I always have high hopes when testing a game out for the first time, but the reality is it's not tested. There's bugs everywhere, and none of the code between different objects and events is compatible. There's a palm tree being displayed over top of a platform, and Wukong can't even walk right. And as he travels between the doors, the screen doesn't move all the way up. There's a lot that needs improving here, it'll take some time to fix it. And my least favorite part out of all of this is his small vert. He can't even jump onto the platform. It is handy for Wukong to have a small jump and hop over some obstacles without risking landing on a distant one. Other times, he needs a big jump, a running jump, to reach tough places. Now, Wukong will venture further into the levels thanks to his big jump. One issue I found when testing the new jump was Wukong was always running. There is no way I could access the short jump. Instead, the big jump is called if the jump EV is held for more than half a second. Less than half a second is a short jump. Now Wukong can perform a small jump or a big jump at the user's discretion.
The bugs appear to be never ending. For each one you see me fix, there's about five others I don't show. This clip is similar to throwing a ball at a wall. It rebounds and comes right back to where it came from. The only thing stopping it is its friction. When a different object, like a t-shirt, is thrown at a wall, it sticks because it's not bouncy. Here, Wukong is stuck to the wall. When he jumps, he hits each platform on the way down. And on a big jump, he hits all three platforms. However, when he is away from the wall, his path is not impeded. This tells me if the wall has some bounce, Wukong will not be stuck to it, thus preventing the platform from affecting his jumps. Wukong's collisions with the platform still have an impact on his behavior. His first run to the right went unaffected, while the second one was slowed down multiple times. I will create a new runtime event instead of the touch event that allows me to constantly update Wukong's speed. Now, instead of the collision event with the platforms randomly slowing down Wukong, the runtime event will reset his speed back to normal. Let's see how it goes. That's new. He no longer switches to his jumping sprite. There's a collision with the platform and he's still walking normally. And instead of stopping at the door, he walks right past. First off, I want to stop the runtime event when Wukong goes through a door. Next, I want to prevent him from switching to his walking sequence if he has jumped. Now, when Wukong enters the door, he is stopped and correctly travels to his destination. Additionally, he is now holds his jumping sequence while in the air. As you continue to develop a game, the amount of code will inevitably increase. Eventually, your script will become so large it will be tough to navigate. At this point, it is best to separate it into multiple scripts, each with one class. For example, this one will solely be for my character. To use the script, I will require it in the main script. Next, I will move all other classes onto their own script. This is not the most exciting work, but it is a necessary step to move forward. Perfect, all done with that. Now I want to go back to the main goal of the section, starting and finishing a level. First, I will create a new class called the Level Select menu with its own background. This class will be the main menu for the game. Players will select different levels from the menu, then this class is responsible for loading the game. I also want this class to track a player's progress. It needs to know what level they are on and how many stars they collected on each level. The last step in starting level is to add an event listener to all the images. When it is clicked, all the images of this class are removed and a level is started. Now that I am able to start a level, I want to be able to finish a level and return back to the main menu. One way to finish a level is by dying. When Wukong falls off the edge and dies, I want to stop everything on the screen and prevent the user from any other interactions. This would include removing all objects from the physics simulation, preventing the screen from moving, and removing all event listeners a player can interact with. And for a good measure, I will add in a game over to remind the player they lost. This here is an important piece of code. Back when I was building my first game, I couldn't figure out how to return from my game back to the main menu. To do this, I will pass a function into my game that will be called once the level is complete. This function will display the main menu, allowing the user to start another level. Another way to finish a level is through winning. Here, Wukong will hit the trophy and celebrate his big win. Building a mobile app is a never-ending adventure. There are always new game mechanics or features that are fun to add in. However, as the code becomes more complicated, more bugs will arise, some of which are very tough to fix. All of this contributes to the challenge in building an app. It is never fully complete, but each improvement makes it a little bit better. Thanks for watching my video. Please, if you enjoyed my video, give it a like, subscribe, and tune in next time to see how Wukong finishes his adventure. See you later.